Hello and welcome to Great Clacton Parish and here to St John's Church. And welcome to our summer series of slightly simpler online services. Each week we look at a psalm from the Bible, one that was recorded as part of our Thought for the Day series a couple of years ago. And I've picked out some of well, what I think would be really good ones to look at again. And uh, we have our usual mix of hymns and songs and prayers and so on, but just a little bit simpler and shorter than uh, most of the time. I do hope we'll find this summer series helpful. And each week we're going to start with the, the collect for morning prayer. And so we pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now at the beginning of September, this is our final week of our summer series looking at the Psalms and today it's Hannah's turn to reflect on Psalm 121 for us. And Psalm 121 famously starts with these words. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The psalmist on a dangerous journey, drawing strength from the fact that the Lord God that he looks to is the maker of all around that he sees, the maker of heaven and earth. So we start with a hymn that reminds us of God's creative power and therefore his power to look after us. His creative power, thy whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. We sing about uh, God's ability to create light as everything else. And then thinking about God's ability to shine light into our lives as well will bring us to our confession after this. First of all, let's sing together as Pam leads us.
Today we use a confession that reminds us of the seriousness of sin, the seriousness of not paying attention to God's commandments and of turning away from him. We remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So let us examine ourselves and confess our sins to Almighty God using the prayer on the screen. Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But as well as the seriousness of sin and the seriousness of turning away from God, Jesus in his teaching and throughout the Bible, we are reminded of how much he loves to forgive all those who turn back to him. And if that is us, this prayer is one that we can pray together, or we can know that is prayed for us. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And once again, we join with a song that reminds us of that wonderful forgiveness.
our affirmation of faith today focuses on what the Lord Jesus did and who he is. It's based on words from Philippians chapter 2. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And what we believe about the Lord Jesus is truly central to what we believe as Christians. And so we have remembered the seriousness of our sin, our inability to keep God's commandments. We've asked for forgiveness. We've celebrated God's grace and the forgiveness and new life that that brings. And we've remembered that it's through Jesus coming to earth that that grace comes. And so remembering our unworthiness, except through God's grace, we pray the collect for today, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, just in a few minutes' time, we will come to that wonderful Psalm 121. But before that, just let's pause for a number of notices. And now that September is here, it's just a reminder that lots of our regular things are restarting uh, this coming week. Uh, just to say that this afternoon, if you're watching this as the premiere, uh, this afternoon, Sunday the 4th of September, 4 o'clock, we've got our Tea Time Church, our first Tea Time Church of the new school term, 4 o'clock in St John's Church. Especially for uh, children and families, but all welcome, and a Tea Time meal at the end. There's no gathering this week uh, at St Mark's. That will start up again next Sunday, the 11th of uh, September. But our morning prayers start up again. Uh, morning prayers on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And even if you can't come to prayers at St John's, we do have the Wednesday version is, uh, is WhatsApp prayers. So do get in touch with me if you'd like to join in um, at, well, there are a range of times through the week, but uh, eight or half eight or nine, um, and especially for those WhatsApp prayers at eight o'clock on Wednesday morning. And then also this week, starting up as Wednesday Worshippers, and it's a first Wednesday special this week, looking at the theme of light through the Bible. Uh, that's at 11 o'clock at St Mark's on Wednesday, and Thursday together service starts at St John's, 10.30 for refreshments, followed by the, the service um, at St John's on Thursday the 8th of September. And then also at St John's this Saturday, we've got some safeguarding training. For those who need to renew their safeguarding training, a chance to do that at St John's on Saturday morning. Do get in touch with the office if you need to book in uh, for that. I think those are enough notices uh, for the moment. Oh, just to say that our children's and youth work, uh, Little Fishes, uh, Searchlights After School Club and Ignite Youth Group all start up this week again. You'll know if you're part of those. Do get in touch with me or the office 
for more details of any of those things. And a couple of birthdays this week as well. Uh, even the seagulls seem to be joining in with uh, wanting to sing happy birthday just there. But it is Joy's birthday this week and Rainer's birthday. And so we sing to Joy and to Rainer. Da 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 da. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joy and Rainer. Happy birthday to you. A round of applause for them. And take this for you as well, if you have a birthday this week that I don't know about. Happy birthday. Well, we come now to, in just a moment, to Hannah, who's going to read and then uh, speak about, reflect on Psalm 121. And then she's going to use that psalm uh, to guide us in some uh, reflective prayers. Uh, a different way of praying uh, this week, a chance for us to pray personally in response to the psalm. But before we listen to Hannah, we're going to sing a song. Psalm, 21, psalm 121 reminds us of many of God's great promises. So we're going to sing, I stand on every promise of your word. From the breaking of the dawn to the setting of the sun, I will stand on every promise of your word. Let's join with Pam as she leads us, and then Hannah will, um, will help us to reflect on these wonderful words of Psalm 121. i 
Thank you for joining us to think about Psalm 121 today. I've chosen Psalm 121 because it's my favourite psalm, probably because I've spent quite a lot of my time in the hills during my lifetime. Firstly, in the Lake District where I was at Teacher Training College, and secondly, in Nepal where I spent two years living in the Himalayan foothills as a volunteer for an organisation called VSO, or Voluntary Service Overseas where my role was a teacher trainer there. So the idea of lifting my eyes to the hills uh, gives me many, many happy memories. Psalm 121 is the second of the 15 songs of ascents, the songs that pilgrims would have sung on their way up to Jerusalem for the Old Testament festivals, reminding them that worship is a gift from God designed to be a joyful and meaningful experience. Let's hear it now. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I love being in the hills either standing at the bottom of one looking up at it or standing at the top of one and looking out at the others all around. It makes me feel small and insignificant as I stand against these towering beauties that speak to me of God's majesty and strength and faithfulness. And that's what I always thought that the beginning of this psalm was speaking of until I did a bit of reading around it for our thought today. Pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem may have been looking up at the hills, wondering what dangers may lurk there in the form of bandits lying in wait to attack and rob those that pass by. Or they may have been looking at them as their end goal, looking out for the far off hills of Jerusalem, a place of refuge at the end of a potentially perilous journey. So rather than a picture of beauty that I always thought them to be, the hills in this psalm are a picture of the dangers and uncertainties that our lives can sometimes be so full of. And in the midst of this insecurity, David the psalmist asks, where does my help come from? And the rest of the psalm then surely does speak to us of God's majesty, strength and faithfulness. Because the answer to that question is this, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And in the remaining verses of the psalm, six times the words watch over or keep are used, reminding us that although danger threatens, we are safe under the wakeful gaze of the maker of heaven and earth. He's always alert and aware of what we're doing and will keep us from all harm, watching over our lives. And of course, we know, don't we, that this is not a promise that makes us immune to difficulties and suffering in this life. But it does assure us of God's unceasing presence and his constant guarding as we make our way through it. For some, the thought that we are constantly watched by God may be an uncomfortable thought. But David realised that God does this to express his deep love for us so that he can guard us and guide us to safety. So let's remember that although danger and uncertainty are to be expected in this part of life's journey, there is also continual protection from the maker of heaven and earth as we look forward to the next. May this thought bring us comfort and encouragement today. Let's spend some time now using what we've heard to help us pray to God. Firstly, I'm going to leave a few moments for us to think and pray about 
the different types of suffering and danger that our world is facing at this time. Now let's think about our local community and the difficulties it faces at this time. And let's name before God now all those that we know personally who are facing hardship and suffering at this time. And for the second part of our prayers, let's praise and give thanks to God, the maker of heaven and earth, for the way he keeps us and watches over us. I'll put the words of the psalm back on the screen and you can use those to bring your worship to God now. And so, as we close, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you that despite the dangers and hardships of this world, we can know your constant watchfulness over our lives and can be assured that ultimately you will keep us from all harm. Amen. we pray together the Lord's Prayer, uh, praying for both our physical needs and our spiritual needs. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much to Hannah today for, for leading us through both our reflection on the psalm and 
the, the main part of our prayers as well. We're coming towards the end of our time together, and that's the end of our series in the Psalms for the moment as well. We may well come back to you some more of those special reflections at another time. But that's the end of this little summer series. And so next week, we're going to start a new series looking at the book of Luke, uh, or part of the book of Luke. And uh, Mark Holdaway, once again, will be our preacher in that series. I'm looking forward to that as well. We return to slightly longer uh, talks, slightly longer um, services, but, but not too long. And as we come towards the end of our time today, we can look forward to, at the end after our final hymn to one more beautiful heart piece uh, from Catherine Porter, as we've been doing throughout this series. One especially looking for God's blessing, which helps us to look for God's blessing and ask for, pray for God's blessing on our lives. But before that, let's sing our final hymn together. We thought about that dangerous uh, journey to Jerusalem in Psalm 121 that may remind us of all the ups and downs of our own journey through life. And so we're going to pray in our final hymn as Pam leads us. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. Let's sing together one more time. Our final prayer today, taken from the end of the book of Hebrews. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. May he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in you what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.